Welcome back, Zero K fans, to another exhibition match, or rather, to Natalie the Dawn, with another exhibition match between Golda and Kane. Kane, once again, this is actually Kane's requested map because apparently they did fight fairly well here. They wanted to watch, have me cast it, and so I will. Well, rather, they wanted me to cast it sort of instead of the last one, but they weren't begrudging me casting the last one because I wanted to show off Isle of Grief because that is not a map we have seen too much of. It's kind of a new map for Zero K. It's not necessarily a new map design, but it is new for Zero K. Anyway, this map, Titan Duel, should be fairly familiar. Flat map, very vehicle focused. The corners are the important thing and everyone goes to them. Probably see Kane go over to the north side and go to, go to the south side. That's generally what happens. Let us begin, not much more to say there. And with corner starts, of course, it's gonna have that radial opening pattern. Typical, typically what happens. Golda going for heavy tanks, and Kane going for light vehicles. We saw Golda play heavy tanks against Drone the other day, and it actually didn't work out too well. I think there were, if I recall correctly, there were some issues with Golda's play. Like their macro was kind of rusty. I think, from what I can gather, reading the chat, or not the chat, the, the forum thread, Golda actually reinstalled 0k at some point, or maybe they reinstalled their OS or something like that, and their normal settings did not carry over. So they were actually trying to play with a handicap. But they didn't have their normal hotkeys, they didn't have the normal various game settings, that all their preferences were just off. So they were playing with the wrong setup, and that threw them. I can totally understand that. Like, I, I'm pretty picky about that too. When I started playing this game, it took me a little while just to get it set up to a point that I actually thought it worked well. And that included doing some coding work, but that was... That don't, that's something you only need to do once, thankfully. Anyhow, Kane, Kane in a pretty vulnerable position, does not defend this back metal extractor, and Golda, did Kane even realize that was coming? Oh yeah, they must have seen it. But they can't really do much about it without having some something there already. Still, a dead Kodachi is 36 metal, which sort of makes up for the... Actually, that does, yeah. Between the metal extractor and the Kodachi, nothing of value was lost, assuming Kane rebuilds this ASAP. Golda still ahead of... In econo Golda still ahead in economy, and I'm sure Kane does not even have any illusions that that was a problem. I mean, bear in mind, Golda is one of the best players. Like, the best or possibly second best right now, I'm not entirely sure. But they are top tier player. So Kane's going to want to have every little advantage they can get and want to avoid any disadvantage that might happen. Such as losing a metal extractor. So while it's not the biggest deal in terms of overall game flow, it's still going to be a problem because it's one more thing that Gorda just has. Kane does not want to have to deal with that. Kane wants all the advantages. Yeah, blue time money losing the money extracted during the time. That's exactly right. They need to rebuild that ASAP because that's like every second. That was about a minute or so. So yeah, they didn't get. They did not get about 120 metal because they didn't have that metal extractor there that entire time. Compared to Gura. So that's going to be an extra half of a Kodachi, I think. No, two-thirds of a Kodachi. Or half of a Panther. Given that Gold is playing heavy tanks, even half of a welder, given that Gold is playing heavy tanks, that's actually not the biggest problem. Assuming that Kane can get rid of at least... If they can get rid of this Panther, they're fine. They can get rid of the Panther and build up their economy. Actually, they might need another Mason. Yeah, if they can build up their economy roughly on par with Gulda and get rid of that one Panther, it should be evened out in terms of overall metal value. Okay, maybe two Panthers. It has been an economic disadvantage for Kane for some time now. What is Kane's priority right now? Okay, they're not building anything in the factory. That's good. I was gonna, and they actually had low priority factor, which is that's actually what I was pointing out was good. Low priority factory is what you want to do because, you, for the most part, if you really need units built, up the priority. But typically speaking, you want to have that lower priority so that everything else can build your defenses and your economy. Because you need that economy to keep building your units. And if you don't have units up, the defenses are really handy for dealing with things. At this point, Gulda not even really going for the corners too much. It looks like they are probably trying, going to try to hit the south. But Kane's also kind of focusing on this out. They're not focusing towards the north at all. Golda sending their commander to the north. Golda might actually take the north. We could have a north-south split. Rather than, the, I find, a more typical east-west split of this map. And Scorch is coming in here. The Scorchers do sort of beat Panthers. Especially when you consider the cost involved. Like, that's... 
How many scorches are there? That's 650 mil. Well, not quite 650. It's 390, I think. No, 520. 520 metal worth of Scorches compared to 300 metal worth of Panther. And Scorches, I believe, do counter, but the Panther right now is in an awkward position just due to that Stinger. And he's got 38 seconds to live, essentially, if it wants to try to assault things. And Kane basically buying time for that. Because if they come in right now, those Panthers come in right now, that, score, that, that, that Stinger's dead. As Gold is doing. Actually, those Panthers are coming in right now, and that Stinger is not doing too well. Will be stunned out in just a sec. Well, not quite. May not die, but still 14 seconds left. 13, 12. That's, those Scorchers are dying to defend. One of the Panthers does go down. Taking out a couple Scorchers. Well, stunning out a couple Scorchers with his Death Explosion. Three, two, and... It's... Is it stunned out? No, it is not stunned out. But it is stunned out before the Panther is destroyed. Which is still a problem. So unfortunately, Golda did manage to take... Or for Kane, at least. Golda managed to take that position, get rid of that Stinger. It maybe got rid of one Panther, but that did not work out for Kane. At all. Kane managed to get their economy roughly on par, however. Like, they reached parity during that fight, but that was still... That Stinger didn't quite work out. It got stunned out. It just... That, that stun. Like, Golda targeting the Stinger was a really... Well, I don't know if they targeted it, or if it was just the Panthers targeted it, but that worked out really well. At this point, Kane only has six Panthers against three, sorry, six slash, sorry, Scorchers against three Panthers. That is not a happy place to be. I think the biggest thing that failed it, though, was the fact that those Scorchers were near the Panther when it exploded. It's kind of hard not to be because Scorchers want to be close to their target unit, but I think the fact that they were meant that they couldn't help deal with the remaining Panther, and thus the Stinger died before it could deal with the last, the next Panther that came in, and the Lotuses as well. So at this point, Golda has the South. We are seeing a typical East-West split. Not seeing any North-South splits. Golda right now in a commanding position, although not economically, and actually Golda's commander, well, ironically, commanding position economically, the commander itself needs to hide to avoid, I mean, because if that was lost, that would have been even economy at that point. Yeah, clutch terraform there from Golda's commander. Otherwise, those Scorchers would have killed it. I find it interesting, too, that Golda terraformed up. The typical thing to do is to terraform down, not up. No, sent Golda terraformed up, which allowed the commander to still deal some damage while also being away from the Scorchers. Now, typically you want to terraform down because the units, if you terraformed up, would still hit you, but because of the Scorcher's proximity weapon, that actually worked out really well. Now, out of curiosity, okay, Golda's commander can come down that ramp. Not that they want to at the moment, but they can if they wish. Yeah, these Panthers, only I think three or four have died in total. Compared to all the Scorchers that have died, yeah, that was... That was painful. So these Panthers right now are in a... They're in a very strong position. And Leveler's up, which I would recommend. I would definitely recommend against the Panthers. And Golda's commander slightly out of position, but at this point it doesn't make much difference. Ride Cannon, I don't think... I'm oh, sorry, Blue Templar asking about the up for Ballistic thing. I don't think it's because of the Ballistic weapon. I don't think Ride Cannon is a Ballistic weapon exactly. It might be, but it would be because down... Like, up means that they can still fire at the Scorchers, but the Scorchers can't really deal much damage. Down means they can't do anything, but nothing can hit them. But when you're dealing with Scorchers, up is a better idea. It's just no one really goes up with their commander. It was it was neat. It's kind of cool. A bit different. Because, like I said, with up... The commander is able to attack, but then it can be attacked. It's just shorter range units can't hit them. Now with the air switch for both players, Kane going for mass mass phoenixes. Golda instead, however, trying to invest in getting the air superiority at the start. And that will probably work in Golda's favor. Although well, the commander is very forward. There are there ravens up? I don't think those there is a Thunderbird. I don't think there are any ravens though. So that Thunderbird will probably be a small issue. Like, stun out the Panthers. If it stuns out the Panthers, that could... Well, that could stabilize Kane. Not turn this around, but reset it to neutral. Because Gold has a massive advantage. If these gets disarmed, and Kane can come back in from that, that will be powerful. At this point, though, Kane's levelers are out of position. I think he, they were anticipating an attack from the south. 
There's defenses from the south, but not an attack from the south. Does Kane know about those? They know about some of the Panthers, not all of them. And Radar is being wonky right now, apparently. Not sure if that's a replay thing, or if that's actually the Radar is in fact getting wonky. I hope it is not the former. And Thunderbird coming in for Golda. Is that close? Yeah, that is Golda's Thunderbird. And Panther is getting stunned out. The Levelers as well getting stunned out. But right now, the Scorchers can come in. These Scorchers can tear everything apart right now. And those Levelers... Sure, they're stunned out, but who cares? Because the Scorchers unfortunately getting crammed on top of each other. Not able to pathfind through each other. And getting clumped up. That is a problem for Kane, and Gold is, Gold is losing all that disarm, but losing a couple of Panthers as well to the EMP. A death EMP. But I think about half the Scorches were lost there, which is not good. There's still, there are still 18 Panthers in the field. Another Panther going down, unfortunately, Scorchers with that death explosion. That's always a problem. Not a huge problem, though, but still, it is an inconvenience. I mean, you basically have to have support Scorchers that'll come in to field for the Scorchers that just get stunned out. Nice! Oh, I was going to say nice dodge there. Kane almost dodged that. Goto looks like they managed to actually come in and reorient Thunderbird right at the last second. Because Kane looked like they were trying to dodge that. Neat play there. But I think Gold is going to go for the kill. Thunderbird coming in here just to stun out whatever else is needing stunning out. And Kane coming in here with their own Thunderbird. Stunning out all but three of the Panthers. I think that's three too many. Especially with, yeah, with the Scorchers being stunned out too, that's not going to work out at all. So Kane unfortunately did not react in time to pull back their Scorchers. Their Scorchers are all going to die. And I think Kane's going to throw in the towel. But, maybe not, because of the Levelers. Why does the Disarm even last? The Disarm doesn't seem to last a super long time. But at least the EMP is downplayed when... Well, unless the Panthers come in like that, because Golda looks like they're trying to just bank on the Death Explosions. And they are wise to do so, because that's working out beautifully. Last ditch attempt for Kane, but I think that's I think that's still it. I don't think there's any way through. Yeah, more more Panthers are streaming in, and that's gonna be it. It's a nice last ditch attempt though. I mean that but that was last ditch. They had no other units to deal with that. They've got nothing. They have absolutely nothing here. Golda has this game. I mean they have a Lotus in their opponent's base. That's that is I have the game. The one victory that yeah, the one victory Kane gets is killing Golda's commander. And then probably losing their own in the process. Or no, no, their commander survived. Not a double comm kill. But yeah, Kane throws in the towel. That is I can kind of see what they mean. Yeah, they they did do a pretty decent job. Those Thunderbirds. On both sides. Quite interesting. And that stinger too. That stinger nearly like man, that stinger. That Stinger had come up just a little bit sooner. There could have been a somewhat different game. The South Side could have been Kane's, probably. I don't know that Kane would have necessarily won, but it would have helped. So, we're going to have one more game tonight. It is going to be on Apophis between Hokomoko and Snuggle Base. A bit of a change of pace because Kane is not in this game. Kane wasn't even watching this game. Well, they might be watching now because it's on the stream, but they weren't, watch they weren't one of the spectators during the game proper. So we'll be back with that in just a moment, so stay tuned.